Hello, my name is Jeff Squires. I work for Cisco Systems, and I'm one of the developers of the OpenMPI project. This screencast is about basic architecture and tuning of OpenMPI. Let's jump right in. OpenMPI is based on what we call the Modular Component Architecture, MCA. It's an acronym you'll see all over the place. It has to do with how we select which plugins are used, and it's uh, the thing that we use for our runtime parameter system. It's really the backbone of the entire OpenMPI system. It, it controls which plugins are loaded, and it's all about uh, our parameterization system. There is a hierarchy to it. The MCA is kind of the foundation. Like I said, it's the backbone. Um, but then below that, we have frameworks, where we have functionality specifications, where a framework would be, what kind of resource scheduler are you using? Or what kind of network are you using? And a variety of things like that. And then components are code for specific functionality within a framework. Think of that as a plugin. So a plugin for what kind of resource manager you would have, we have a Slurm component, and a Torque component, and an LSF component, and an SGE component, and so on and so on. A module is kind of an instance of a component. And this makes sense when you, have, when you might have more than one of a certain thing. So for example, for a framework, for what kind of network that you have, let's say you have two Ethernet cards. Well, we would use the TCP component for that, but we'd have two instances of it and therefore two modules. Here's a diagram of our architecture in OpenMPI. At the top level, obviously, is the user application. Below that is the standardized MPI API. And then everything in, below, in blue below that is the implementation of OpenMPI. So we have the backbone MCA there. And then underneath that, all the different frameworks. Like I said, one could be for resource management, one could be for network type, one could be for what type of collective algorithms to use, and so on and so forth. And then underneath each framework are all the individual components or plugins. There are three main code sections in OpenMPI. The first is the OpenMPI, the, the MPI layer itself. So it's the top level MPI API, such as MPI send, MPI receive, and all the supporting logic that goes with that. The next layer below that, uh, the next section below that, is the Open Runtime Environment, or ORTE. It's the interface to the back-end runtime system, like I mentioned before, Slurm, Torque, LSF, or, or whatever you've got. Um, and then underneath that is the Open Portability Access Layer, or OPAL. And this is just a bunch of glue code and operating system specific code, so lists and reference counting and particular assembly instructions for Solaris versus Linux versus OS X and, and so on. Now, one thing important to realize here is that these are dependencies. They are not layers. So OpenMPI depends on Orte, depends on Opal. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go through all three layers, for example, to get to the network. Here's a picture of what it looks like, makes it look a little more obvious. So you can see how the dependencies are layered on top of each other, but they can also touch the operating system directly if they need to. So, for example, OpenMPI, the MPI layer can go straight out to the, to the network stack. Now, just to make it make a little more sense, if you throw in the whole um, diagram that we had before, the MPI API makes up the top bit of the OpenMPI layer, and then the user's application is layered on top of that. Let's talk just a little bit about tuning here. Uh, OpenMPI is all about MCA parameters. I briefly mentioned these at the beginning. MCA parameters are runtime tunable values. We kind of have a, a rule of thumb in the OpenMPI developer community that Whenever we want to use a constant, we don't. We make it a runtime tunable parameter because we recognize that some user out there somewhere is likely going to want to change it. Not everybody. Most users are going to be content with the defaults, but there's a lot of power users out there or you have a particular architecture where you'll actually need to change some value. So we classify these by three, by three areas here. So there are runtime tunable values per layer. So for example, for example the entire MPI layer or the entire Orte layer. There are runtime tunable values for the entire framework. So you could say uh, this governs all the collective algorithms that are used in the MPI layer. Um, and then there's also some per component. So for example, if I want to tune the, the behavior of a particular open fabrics component on a point to point network, I can do that. Um, these change, it's very important to recognize that these are runtime tunable things. It does not require recompiling or relinking of either the user application or the MPI implementation. So you can literally just pass in a new parameter on the MPI run command line, for example, and uh, the parameter will change. So a very simple example is, oh, okay, well, let's do an MPI run uh, over Ethernet, and then let's do an MPI run over InfiniBand or some other network, and you can see the performance difference between the two. 
we actually have four different ways of specifying MCA parameters um, and then listed in priority order here. The first one is on the MPI run command line. You can do dash dash MCA and then the name of the parameter and the value. And this is the highest precedence thing, so whatever you specify in the command line overrides all the others. Next, you can set uh, via an environment variable. If you set umpi underscore MCA underscore and the name equals the value, this is a nice way for system administrators to set a site-wide default if they want to. Third, uh, we actually take a pair of files that uh, you can set them into. Uh, under the user's home directory at .openmpi directory mcaprams.conf, um, you can put key equals value lines in there, and those will be read as well. Or a system administrator can put an etc openmpi mcaprams.conf file um, and set some site-wide defaults in there, where dollar prefix is where openmpi is installed. These two locations themselves are, are tunable as well. Um, although we haven't found any reason to change them. But just like anything else, we don't want to have a constant. It's, it's a runtime parameter. And then fourth is the default value, whatever the developer chose to put in the code base itself. Now, this actually comprises a whole lot of information. OpenMPI has somewhere in the order of 30 frameworks. It, it varies up and down with every release. And, you know, at any given time, over 100 different components. Um, and again, this varies up and down, too, as developers add and remove components and things like this. Every component has runtime tunable parameters. So how on earth are you supposed to know what all the parameters are and how to use them? The answer is the umpi info command. It tells you everything about your umpi installation. It finds all the components that are installed. It'll tell you what all the parameters are that every component has. And it's great for debugging, too, because it'll show you what the current value of the components are. So if you set something in a file and forgot about it, umpi info will tell you. So you can even look up uh, the parameters for a specific component. If you do umpi info dash dash param and a type and a plugin, it'll tell you, oh, for this particular framework name and for this particular component name, I'll show you the parameters and their current values, like I said before. So if you set an environment variable or you set a file value, umpi info will show it. Now you can also use the keyword all for either type or plugin there. So if you do dash dash param all all, it'll show you all the parameters uh, throughout the entire OpenMPI system. There's also a dash dash parsable option that you can throw on OP info, which makes it great and parsable to machine readable commands like sed, awk, grep, and so on. The default is a pretty print human readable kind of interface, but dash dash parsable will print it out in a machine readable interface. Quite handy for scripts and the like. Now here's one spe uh, example here. Specify the BTL. The BTL is the byte transfer layer. It's the framework for MPI point-to-point -point communication, so TCP, shared memory. InfiniBand and, and so on. Um, and what you can do with this is say, I want to use these components, these plugins, and that effectively tells OpenMPI which networks to use uh, for MPI communication. So if you look at that command line there, MPI run dash dash MCA and BTL, the framework name itself is a tunable parameter. And then the next line, the, the next token there is the value, TCP comma self, and that says to use two components, TCP and self where self is loopback. Um, I'll get to that in a second here. So it's, this is what we call a framework level MCA parameter, and it specifies which components to load at runtime. So let's look at this in a little more detail here. MPI run, and we want to run four copies of a ring program, a canonical just test program here, and it says to load two TCP, uh, uh, two BTL networks. TCP, like I said, is TCP sockets, and self, which is process loopback. Um, and that means if you ever do an MPI send to yourself, not on the same machine, but to yourself. It's just a mem copy, right? So it doesn't need to go to the TCP stack at all. This is not really so much an optimization, a uh, little side note here, this is not so much an optimization as it is good software engineering. We didn't want to have to put the mem copy code in every single one of our BTL components, so we created a special one called self, and that guy is used for process loopback. So let's take a variation on this. All right, well, let's say I want to do the OpenIB BTL. The OpenIB is for open fabrics networks, either iWarp or InfiniBand. So instead of using TCP, you just put OpenIB comma self there, and boom, all of a sudden your program is now using open fabrics networks. All right, let's again take another variation on this and say SM comma OpenIB comma self. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't have to be just two values. It's a comma delimited list, but it's one token, so it can be as many values as you'd like. SM is shared memory. So let's say you've got a high core count set of servers. Shared memory will be used for on-node communication, and OpenIB, the open fabrics verbs, will be used for off-node communication, and self will be used for process loopback. 
So here's a little quiz question here. What exactly does this do? MPI run NP4 ring.c. Which networks are we going to use? Well, it's kind of a trick question because uh, one of the big themes of OpenMPI is it will try to do the right thing by default. So what this will do is use all available components because you didn't specify anything, so we'll try them all. We'll try TCP, shared memory, OpenIB, and so on. If we find OpenIB, we'll use it. If not, we won't. Now, that kind of raises an obvious question. Wait a minute, why on earth would I want to use TCP with OpenIB? Well, you really wouldn't, right? The latency differences are so different between InfiniBand and IV um, iWarp networks and regular plain vanilla TCP sockets networks that you really wouldn't want to mix them. It, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. You're not going to get too much performance benefit out of that. As a matter of fact, you can get performance degradation out of it. So we actually have a little override in there that's not really worth going into too much detail. But TCP will basically figure out that a, a lower latency network and a higher performance network is being used and deactivate itself. So it just does the right thing for you. So if you have kind of a canonical Linux cluster where you have a, a high performance network and then also a, a TCP based network for your administrative and NFS and things like that, when you MPI run, OpenMPI will do quote unquote the right thing and will use your high performance network for MPI communications. So more specifically, what this is going to do is open each BTL plugin that it finds and it's going to query that plugin. It's going to say, hey, do you want to be used? And OpenMPI will track all the ones that say, yes, yes, I want to be used. And it'll rank them by bandwidth and latency and do the right thing. So, for example, if you have a DDR InfiniBand network and an SDR InfiniBand network and both of them are running, OpenMPI will do the right thing because it'll auto-sense the bandwidth uh, that's available on both and, and stripe accordingly, uh, proportionally, how much uh, network capacity is available. All right, so here's another trick question. What exactly does this do? Dash dash MCA BTL caret... TCP. Give up? All right, well, it uses all the available components except TCP. The caret is our annotation for exclusive not. So more specifically, it's going to open every BTL component except TCP, and then it's going to go through the same selection process. Query if they want to be used, keep the ones that say yes, and then rank by bandwidth and latency. Now, you might ask yourself, why didn't we use an exclamation point? Because that's kind of the, the natural... Uh, denotation for not. Well, if we used an exclamation point, that means you would have had to escape it on the command line, and nobody wants to do slash bang to just to get a not notation, so we opted to use the caret instead. All right, so uh, just as an example, if you want to look at all the OpenIB BTL parameters, I just wanted to give an example of, of something that we talked about earlier. You can do oompy info dash dash param space BTL space OpenIB, and it'll show all the parameters for that plugin. And there's a lot of them. So what you might want to do is actually add that dash dash parsable on the end there and, you know, throw it into a script. Now note, you know, you, you see all these things, you're like, gosh, what does all this mean? For almost all of them, we've been pretty good about it, um, there are little help strings describing what each parameter is so you're not entirely lost. If you run into situations you don't understand, you want to do some more power tweaking, please don't hesitate to throw questions at us on the users list. We'd be happy to answer them for you. That's all I really had for this screencast. Hope you found this information useful. Thanks.